Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Big Red's Isopods. And this week, we're going to be doing another one of our monthly feedings, but this time, we're going to be taking a look at our Kibara species. So before further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, so the first species we're going to take a look at today is one of my favorite, Kibaris red tiger. Uh, for, you, for all of you who have been uh, with the channel for a while, you guys know this species pretty well. I've talked about them quite a bit in the past. And as you can see, by the monkai running around, they're doing just fantastic. There's a whole lot of monkai in here. So we're going to take a look in here and see what we got going on, which there's lots of isopods in here. Lots of beautiful, beautiful Kibaris isopods in here. Lots and lots of them. Quite a beautiful species. Uh, relatively hardy. A little bit more on the pricey side, but I know that the price has gone down a little bit. Not too sure how much, but definitely something you're going to want to have if you're a hobbyist. So we're just going to flip that back over. Don't want to bug them too much. Like I always say, you want to leave them alone as much as possible. So we're just going to give them a little bit of fish flake here. A decent amount of fish flakes since there is quite a few of them in there. Try to get it more down into the soil since that's where they'll be kind of foraging more. And then I am going to give them just a little bit here of some zucchini slices I got. I'm going to put some down in there. One piece there. One piece over there. And that should pretty much do them for a week. They should be fine. They don't usually need too much vegetation, but I think they'll do just fine with how much I've given them. Quite a beautiful, beautiful species. The next culture we have here is actually my Cubaris marina, the little sea isopod. So if we take a look here, there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of isopods running around in here. Probably one of my more prolific cultures out of any of the different species I have. They don't have a lot of color to them, but I do enjoy them quite a bit. If you take a look here, they have two little orange stripes on their bums there that are just adorable. So this is definitely one I would suggest having in your culture. I mean, pretty much any isopod I, I keep, I would recommend having. Maybe not some of the more basic ones aren't really something you're gonna want as a hobbyist, but these ones, these ones definitely are. Flip that back over there. We'll take a look under here as well. Oh yeah, that's where the majority of them are. Like I said, very prolific species. If you take a look down in there, you'll see all sorts of lines on their bums. They'll be all over the place. Sure, you can spot them out with how many isopods there are in here. Just a wonderful, wonderful species. Getting a little bit low on water here. Want to use the rest of it up though. And then we're going to do the same thing, except a little bit more heftier with the food in, the, in this one. Want to really have it around where the majority of the isopods are. As you can see, I put in quite a bit of fish flake in here, but again, majority of where the isopods are, which is on this piece of bark here around this piece of bark. There will be some foraging around that'll get the rest of it, but I really want it to be where they mainly are so it doesn't get any mold on it. That way that they can eat it up easily. And then the rest of the stuff that I lightly sprinkled other places will be taken care of by foraging. And again, I'm gonna take a couple slices of zucchini, uh, put one down here by this grouping, cut off another one, it down over there maybe one more little shave because these guys are in huge numbers so they're definitely going to eat this stuff up and that'll be good for another week for those guys so before i go into my uh final culture of cubara species i want to say that the cubaris marina that i separated out are doing fantastic actually all of the cultures that i separated out for the morph video 
they're all braiding finally and they all got monkai running around in the container i took a look at it when i did my feeding this week i didn't record that for you guys but there wasn't really much to see there i only saw one or two maybe three monkai in each container so i know that there's other ones in there but they're going to be down in the soil they're going to be eating all the sorts of nutrients in the soil so we're not going to be able to see them so i'm not going to show you guys that but i just wanted to let you guys know that they're doing fantastic so last but definitely not least we got my culture of panda kings which is definitely one of my favorite species of cubaris there's other ones that i do enjoy as well like the duckies but they're just far too expensive i know the price has gone down with a lot of the cubaris now that they've got kind of more breeders now in north america and they don't have to ship them over as much but they're still quite a high price and i just i love these pandas so much they're just so adorable if i could get my hands on some uh, rubber duckies now that i know how to take care of cubaris better i definitely would but it's definitely not a starter that you'd want to start with. So that's why I chose to shy away from it. As you can see, there's lots of Panda Kings in here. Their numbers did go down for a little bit back there when I had a mold outbreak, but now they're ramping back up. They're doing fantastic. So I am gonna give these guys a decent amount of food, not a hefty amount, but a decent amount of food. Sprinkle a little bit down here, sprinkle a little bit down here, a little bit over here. And then just some down at the end for some foraging. That should be good enough. Give them a nice spritz down. All Kibara species do enjoy their, uh, their moisture gradient here. They love moisture as they are found over in Thailand, I do believe, which is more of a humid country compared to where I live. So make sure that they're full of moisture. Give them a little bit of zucchini as well not quite as much as the little sea isopods because those ones are in greater numbers than these but enough to keep them from going hungry throughout the week and that'll be it for my kibara species feeding but i do have one more thing i want to show you guys so i thought i'd give a little bit of a surprise to you guys who stuck around to the end of the video we're actually going to do a rehoming so this is my species of Armadillidium gastroi, or gastroi, one of the largest species of Armadillidiums, or the largest species of Armadillidiums. They're doing crazy good. They got crazy good numbers, and as you can see, they're actually starting to crash a little bit, so it's about time, or a little bit past the time I should have transferred them over to a new container. I'm just going to set that bark there, kind of watch them to make sure none of them run off. This one here, I'm gonna transfer over into the new container, which as you can see is twice the size. Normally I would upgrade the container to a lot larger of a size, but since they're an armadillidium, I think this will be just fine for now. They don't usually grow in size too terribly quick. I know these ones are relatively quick compared to some of the other ones I've seen, but not too fast. Let's take a look down in here and just see the numbers that we actually have in here, which are crazy amounts. As you can see, there's some monkai down in the corner there. So what I want to do is just carefully kind of transfer all their stuff over to the other bin. Their leaf litter over. Oh, there's a guy who escaped on me. Grab him up. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Curl up in a ball. Easier to pick up that way. Definitely a beautiful species with that, that beautiful purple skirt and the yellow speckles. Just a gorgeous species. And I do believe they are this color to mimic a, um, a millipede that is from where they're from, a pill millipede that is from where they're from that actually is poisonous. So the isopods try to mimic that and that causes them to not get preyed upon. Since they are a very large isopod, that's a really good idea, because I'm sure lots of different animals would find them just a nice size snack. So I'm just gonna carefully transfer this soil over without hurting the isopods too terribly much. There is better ways to do this, and if you didn't wanna transfer over the soil, that's up to you. But I got lots of new soil in here. I don't mind adding the old, old soil in. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen my culture splits in the past, but sometimes I will take half the soil out into the new container and half the soil out into the same container. 
but it is important to have some of the old soil in the new container. So anyway, this home will be just fine for them. They're gonna have a great home, much more space in here. So the last thing I'm gonna do is just give them a little bit of feed, just a little bit due to the fact that they're gonna have lots of foraging space in there, just a little bit of protein in case they're extra hungry. That should be good for now because they're going to have all this extra soil that they can forage through and whatnot and they're going to need some time to get used to the new place so i don't want to give them too much food that might have been too much already even though there's barely any in there and that'll be that anyway that's it for this week's feeding video guys thank you all for sticking around to the end don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you all again next week all right bye